man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. And we were. You are God, and we worship you. You are God, and we worship you. You are God, and we worship you. Father God, we want to thank you for this afternoon. Come on, somebody, thank God for this afternoon. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the breakthrough. Thank you for what you know is being done. This is a work of faith. 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 Of faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Elbow your neighbor and tell them welcome in the presence of God. Thank you, choir. Wow. If you're seated in the sun, God is with you. You are not alone. Shout amen. amen. How was your week? Huh? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Allow me to inform you today that uh, Manifest Kumi Fellowship is officially launching this Sunday at a hotel called Grandma. Grandma Hotel. At Grandma along Palisa Road opposite uh, the Wiggins Teachers Quarters. Wiggins or why Wiggins? Wiggins. <laughs> All right. So the, 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 that's, that's, that's where they are. Uh, we, it's a pleasure to have you online and all of you that are streaming live on YouTube, on Facebook, on Manifest Television and everywhere in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. This morning, or actually late early morning, the Lord impressed on my heart to have a conversation with us of a sermon entitled, When the Promises of God Are Delayed. When the Promises of God are delayed. It's a very important conversation we have to have here. When the promises of God are delayed. There are people who can relate to this conversation. You've had an illness. You believe you're healed. You believe in your spirit that that disease is no longer in you. And spiritually, you have conquered the realm. Your body is not weak, maybe. Or some of you, your body is sometimes weak from the same affliction. But some of you, probably, you've even mastered the realm. And perhaps you've not yet seen the change in your body, but you feel in your spirit that you're healed. You go to for checkup, they still find the same disease in your life or in your body. 
how you respond to that is important. There's a mother right now watching me. You have prayed for your child or children for years. You've claimed the promises of God. You've said, Father, you said. You said. You said. And you keep on telling yourself, you're in prayer, you're in fasting for your child. But you have not yet seen the change that you desire. There's somebody here, you have been seeking for a job. You know the promises of God. You have claimed them over your life for years. But you have not yet gotten the job you desire. Or it's not working. What have you done to my mic? Something has changed. I can change. I can feel it. Or you, maybe it's the other side. I don't know. Or you are the kind who perhaps has been dealing with uh, marital issues. You're praying for your spouse. You prayed for them to change. You don't see the change. You have held on to the promises, but you still don't see the change you believe. There's somebody here. You've prayed for your wife. She's not changing. Maybe she's born again, but she's crazy. She does things you don't understand. There's a woman here. You have prayed for the man. You have fasted for this man. You have sowed seeds for this person. Praise the Lord. I hear something like an echo. It wasn't there. So, I came to talk to that person. I came to talk to that person when the promises of God are delayed. And sometimes, or many a time, as a man of God, I think I have carried so much pain when I see this person who has believed for 10 years, 15 years, 13 years, 4 years, tomorrow do something that is so randomly out of the will and purpose of God. And then they say, you know what? I want a divorce. You know what? I think this job is not working. You know what? I think I'm dedicating myself to be a nun. Who? Somebody said, who? What does that mean? You agree or you're among the dedicated ones? You know, I've believed God for a husband and I've failed to get them. Nah, uh -uh. Let me stay alone. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 verses 12, hope deferred maketh the heart seek. It's a fact that when you hope and believe for something over years and that thing just does not happen, the heart starts to become sick. You might not know immediately, but over time, things start to happen around you that really show that you're a wounded person. Maybe it begins, it begins with a hot temper. Some of you hate yourself so much that you hate everybody. You just come to church and look at some people and you feel angry. Even when they've not done anything to you. And maybe the problem is not the people you're angry at. You're just angry with yourself because many things are not working. Hope has been defied. So it's a normal experience for the heart to become sick when hope is defied. My pain, again, like I said, is when people, because that delay has come, you hear somebody saying, you know what? I'm done with God. This thing of God, eh? it ain't working. This thing of men is not working. So you generalize all men, like that one Thomas, <laughs> who disturbed you. So all of us start paying prices for Thomas. Women, don't tell me. Kids, I wish I never had any. They start making, some of them start making 
permanent resolutions over temporary challenges. I will never think of dating again. They've just broken her heart. She's 32. <laughs> okay, you wait. Your mind will change. But you, you, you hear that kind of experience? And then some start doubting God. And somebody says, ah, I gave up on God. If he is a good God and faithful and just, why didn't he do this for me when I know he did it for so and so and so? Now you've even started to carry jealousy and envy and anger against those whom the Lord is prospering. You just see somebody being announced and something hits you. You hear like a third in your heart. They've announced a couple. You're sitting in your home, you're already frustrated, and then somebody sends you a message and says, hmm, do you know Samantha got a new job? Where? Bank of Uganda. Do you know so-and-so was promoted last week? You don't hear it only, you even feel it. And then you start feeling your veins charging in a way you don't even understand. Why? Because promotion has just happened on another life. Somebody comes and tells you, my child scored first grade. And then you remember your son and you say, hey. <laughs> wow. He's a smart boy. <laughs> One time my sons and daughters bought me a very nice Benz. It was an E-class. And so they packed it. <laughs> Papa, we love you. So I look at this thing. I think it was my birthday. A few of them. Many years ago. About seven or eight. So <laughs> I get this friend of mine, man of God, because I was elated, I was excited. That day, you know how it actually came in a very amazing way. I'll tell you why. The Lord had sent me to a certain nation. And he had warned me. I'm going to send you to that nation. But you're going to spend everything you have on your account. So I went into that nation, bought my tickets, paid my hotels. spent on. I spent quite a lot of money. And, and, and uh, so on return, that car came like that. So you see, it was like God comforting his minister. So it was a testimony because I realized, and I always tell people, you can never outgive God. You can never outgive God. Nothing in the service of God will come to you in the same measure. Never forget that. So it was one of those days I outspent myself. Went to preach in this nation, went into about five states and then returned. And at the airport, I'm welcome with this wonderful, nice E-class. So I call this wonderful man of God, friend of mine, said, man, come and see what the Lord has done. The song had not yet just come out. But my heart was singing, can you come and see what the Lord has done? And I love Benzes and I, what I waited for. It has come to us. So, I bring this guy, I said, look what God has done. And then he walks around you like this. Look at my face. Congratulations. I said, that awkward moment. Thank you. He says, I have to go. Sat in his car. Wow. Some of you exactly like that. <laughs> you just see somebody parking and your heart starts to go, poo, 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 poo. and you hear the conversations. Eh, hey, Irene, is that her car? And as good as God can be, the person who's next to you knows. Yes. 
you begin your week that way. You come in on Thursday the next week. And I, God intends it. Irene sits in front of you. And as though the whole world is working together in this cornucopia of things to frustrate you. Even the choir is working against you. That's when the choir leader brings a song. You're not a man. And then you see Irene like, God who opens doors, no man can shut. So you see this Christian singing, You're not a man. No. You're not a man. No, no. You're the God of everything. What's wrong? Just, just, and then the preacher's like, Let's worship God, people. Oh, Rachel raises the, the ring which they proposed, don't eh? You, you, you already have your issues, eh? And that's the day she's in front of you. She even cried. And then you're like, Why is she crying? While you're healing, unfortunately, the next day it's your birthday. You've entered the fourth floor. Are you following what I'm saying? These things happen. And I came to help you. The Lord taught me something years ago that I want to give you today about jealousy. Envy. Jealousy is the spirit that deceives you that because a man has entered a new eon of blessing, therefore you have been disqualified. That's the problem with the spirit of jealousy. It tells you or deceives you that because somebody has received something, therefore something has been taken away from you. That's the problem with jealousy. Examine it. You realize if she had gotten that when you had also been proposed to that week, you'd not have a problem. But the problem is she has been proposed to and you were checked last week. Sometimes you don't even need to be checked. You don't even just need, you, you just need to be in a, you just have to be in a space where you don't have a man yet. That's already enough to destroy you. You think that because your brother found a car or built a house, therefore you are less or that God has taken away from you. And this is how you heal. This is how you heal. Nothing added on a man takes away from you. You have a journey too. And our God is the God who can start from where you are, even when you have lost 10 or 20 years, and construct you in a way that one day people will look at you and what has been redeemed on your life will look as though you had entered in first. That is God. Some of you, the day heaven opens well like this on your life, the day you will touch money, you will touch money for generations. Now I'm prophesying. You're not going to have just a nice house in Gayaza. No, you will touch money for generations. That's how God works. Never compare yourself with anybody else's blessing because you don't know their journey. No, no, let me give you an, a sample space. How many of you, when you were younger, their neighbors you admired, but now when you look at them, you don't? Put up your hands. Almost all of you except Pastor Ronnie. He was the admired one. How many of you remember that? Some of you, even when your parents were lecturing you, they used to lecture you against those people. Why don't you be like Peter? And as soon as your father says it, that's the day you're both walking out of the gate and Peter drives and then he packs. Hi. <laughs> Must you pack? 
and then your father says, so how are you? And then, you know, parents have a way of digging at you. Oh, this is your car? <laughs> Congratulations. Hmm. So where do you work? And then the, the goon says, DFCU Bank. Did you hear that, Grace? DFCU. In the back, they're slapping you with this thing of you guy. What's wrong with you? Okay, have a good day. Lecture next 30 minutes. Now you, see, now you see that boy. He has left already. Now see. Hmm? These guys are working their building things. I even heard he's getting married. And then you look at yourself and you're still in your mother's house. And you're like. <laughs> then you come to church. And then they preach a hot sermon. And then you go back on fire and a flame. And then the next comparison comes the next day. I thank God. Because he taught me this very early. I don't compare myself with anybody. No. And I remember one time I said to my dad, I said, Dad, watch, you'll see. Watch me, you will see God. You will see my God. Somebody shout amen. But I came to, to help somebody. Something might linger. The promises are there. The answers are there. But something is just not manifesting. Certain things delay sometimes. And it's a fact that sometimes things might delay. You only need to look so much the other way not to recognize that certain things can sometimes not happen in the time you want them to happen. And we've not trained our believers to carry thick skin. They can only endure a certain far. And then one day they compromise and forsake the rock of their salvation. So this is something that I had heard from God many years. And it is something that I have practiced with myself. And I wanted to give it to you and I know that it will help you today. Psalm 16 verses 8. The psalmist had an experience. And through that generosity he chose to give it to us in such a simple language, yet very profound interpretation. He said, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. And he said, I shall not be moved. This right here is the secret. I have set the Lord always. Not sometimes, not in the Sunday service, not in the Thursday evening service. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. He said, I shall not be moved. Now, let's go a bit deeper and study this. The Hebrew word therefore set he says, I have set the Lord is shoval. Shoval means a few things, and I'm going to define them. Then from there, build my case. Shoval means to agree with God. So it could be read as, I have agreed with the Lord always. Now, you, I need to also help you understand here, when you go in the Hebrew, because I usually read from Hebrew into English or from Greek into English, the word before me is not in the Hebrew language. It was not originally there. This is something that King James gave or other translators gave uh, just to make meaning from where they saw. When you go in the original Hebrew, the word before me is not existent. In fact, in the original, it is, I have set the Lord because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. That's how it's read. I have set the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? Now, actually, I've set the Lord always. I've set the Lord always. There's a word. I have set the Lord always. Because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. That's how it's read. And in the Hebrew, there's a full colon there. I have set the Lord always. You understand? I have set the Lord always. Full colon. Because 
he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. You get the translation. Now let's go back to Shalval. Shalval means, I have agreed with the Lord always. The other definition is, I have adjusted to the Lord always. The other definition is, I have composed myself before the Lord always. The other definition is, I have behaved myself with the Lord always. The other definition is, I have profited the Lord always. It's important. There's something in here, in this central narrative, that God wants to reveal to you in building the right character when you are waiting on God. He's saying that regardless of how long things are taking in your life, the psalmist says, I have agreed with God always. In other words, I've not dissented. I've not drawn back like a child. You know, some of you with God are like children. The other day I was sitting with somebody, this wonderful minister, and then they tell you all they've gone through life. And they're a minister. They are a minister. And then they say, you know what? I almost gave up. I, I almost gave up on God. But somehow God lifted me, but I almost gave up. I have met pastors who have given up in ministry. I have met ministers. Somebody wakes up and it, it's overwhelming. And they say, you know eh? I think I need to leave the choir for some time. Because eh, there's things that are failing. Ah. Ah. Oh, I think I need to leave this job. It's too much for me. Ah. I think I need space. Ah. You see what I'm saying? The question is, is it in purpose and line with God's will or because of your emotions you have made a decision that only reveals that you didn't know God in the first place? Let me tell you, some of you should know God. Some of you should know God. You know, one time I was sharing with people and I said, I wonder the day we're going to stand next to men whose wives were killed and children because they believed the same gospel. Some of you abandoned because you looked for a job for three days. Some, sometimes I wonder how some of you will stand the Bible tells you missionaries that were burnt at stake in India. A man went with his four children and wife. And then they burnt them to stake. And that's the end of their story. They are sending glory with such a crown. And you have a believer who left church because somebody annoyed them. The head of security hurts them. And then you have these emotional people around them who also think like them. But you know, they were hurt. <laughs> they were hurt. What do you mean? What do you mean? The man we're representing, ladies and gentlemen, shed his blood. That's so why when Paul, I think it's Paul when he says that this temptation you're going through, it's not as far as the shedding of blood. You have not died. A man goes to Derby, preaches the gospel. They beat him almost to death. And they throw him out of the city because in Jewish culture, they don't like burying people in the cities. The cities represent so much in, in speaking into destiny. So they don't like any marks of death. They threw this guy out of the city. And then, <laughs> he 
He wakes up, dusts himself with all the wounds on his body, and goes to Lystra to preach the same thing that got him beaten. That got him beaten. No, he went to Derby, I think. Is it? Stood around, rose up, came into the city. The next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Yes, Lystra to Derby, right? It was from Lystra to Derby. And those are the people on, on that day you're going to stand with. You two waiting for your crown. Jesus, hi! You understand what I'm saying? Some of you must grow some thick skin. Elbow somebody and tell them, grow th some thick skin. Grow some thick skin. The Bible says you have not resisted unto blood. You have not resisted unto blood. Yet there are people who have. They have marks. Some of you don't, do you don't even have a clue. I remember one day, I felt so sick. University days. So sick. And I lost weight. Skinny. Everybody who looked at me was afraid of me. All my trousers became so small. And my lungs, I was coughing every night. And, and temperature and everything. And I was sick. And I used to cough you know, foam, and it was so bad. I remember that time my dad came to university, looked at me and wept and said, let me take you back home. When you heal, you'll commence your studies. And that was a time when the gospel had started to take root in the university. So I told my dad, I'm not going anywhere. So he said, okay. Pleaded with me for some time and he said, you know what, I'll let you be. So he leaves me. So I continue preaching the gospel. And I remember I used to preach from evening sometimes, get back into the hostel about 1 or 2 a.m. And I cough from 3 a.m. up to 7 a.m. Sleep for a few minutes, bathe and go to class. And repeat that. I remember those days of feeding on buns. <laughs> buns and probably an egg for dinner. Because you gave your money to a kid to have fees. I'm not telling you these things to feel sorry for me. No, I'm trying to help some of you who don't know how to stand in hard days. Because of especially the younger generation, especially these 32, 28, 15, 17, 22, those guys don't want bad lives. As in they, I know they hate them, but they can't endure. They are not patient with life. They don't know that you're not just going to wake up tomorrow and you're a million dollars rich. It's not how life goes. You're going to have a process too. You're also going to be tested and tried in the ways of life and the principles of life will weigh you against higher laws. So you have a journey to reconcile many things. Things are not going to happen tomorrow morning. For some, yes. But if a man has it tomorrow, then there's a process. And that process was not just a laying on of hands. It was a giving of wisdom. It was a seed of understanding and knowledge that what is implanted in their lives. And they invested their heart to yield to it for it to bring the peaceable fruit to deal with the conflicts of life. So you preach that whole evening. You're coughing the whole night. I remember one day I was in a Baptist church teaching. You teach you go out, you cough, you throw up, you're shaking, you come back on the pulpit, you just told them to speak in tongues, you release the anointing, and people get healed. And I remember by the time I was off that, that, that pulpit, I just fell out. There was no strength in me. And then people put me in a the car. They take me to a hospital. And the next day, I'm going for the next meeting. I remember I was supposed to lead uh, a certain service. And I was, in, the whole body was dead. Sick. And I remember I pulled a cannula. Went out of hospital. Preached and came back and they plugged it in. Do you understand? I'm not telling you these things to praise me. I'm trying to help some of you understand. 
that there is a price. There is a price. There is a price. It's just that the, the grace of God is available to labor in you so that price becomes effortless. So to, to, to see that without pressure, it does not mean that there is no price. It only means that grace has held you. It has upheld you and underguarded you to preserve what God has placed on your life. But many people here cannot stand hard days. Some of us have been sick to a point where a doctor tells you, if you, a woman once told me, if you walk out of this room, you're not going to leave. You're going to fall down and die. I walked out of that room and went to preach in an overnight. And then you tell me that you didn't come to church because you are feeling a headache. My throat is paining. You understand? Some of you, you have to grow up. You have to grow up. If you, you have to grow up. If you can fail to go in the presence of a healer because you're sick, and you tell me you have faith in divine healing, you have a bigger problem. You don't. You don't. You don't. What about those they bring on, 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 on beds in the church? Haven't you seen people bedridden, coming for service because they want healing. Oh, I can't come to church. My muscle. My, your muscle. Our, our live stream. <laughs> and tomorrow he's going to become a father. He's going to raise kids too. And then you, you, you want to explain him that to be a father <laughs> is more than just contributing seed. To be a mother is more than carrying a sack. It comes with a responsibility to fight with and for your children. And you have to devote that skin. Oh. And they, they want to get married too. So like, what will you even handle? Do you even know what it means? Do you understand it? And they also raise their hands, Lord, if you're looking for anybody to use, use me. I'll go anywhere you want me to go. And then the next day they receive a letter from the HR. Please be advised, you've been posted to Lira Brands. <gasps> Apostle! How can I be posted to Lira? You ask them, but Lira, there are people also there. <laughs> yeah, but why? I'm going to write my resignation. What? I'm resigning. How can I go to Lira? Because they've been posted to another district. A few kilometers away from their home. That's the generation we're dealing with. Now bring hard circumstances. Allow things to come that are really hard and they want you to wait on God. And they don't have a muscle. And that's what's really happening, especially in most, the most developed countries. Now the churches have become nurses of babies who just don't want to grow. If you say this, you're going to offend us. If you say this, you're going to hurt us. Please don't touch this. You're going to destroy us. You understand? So they, 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 they live in spaces of trying to nurse babies that have refused to grow. They are very sensitive. Believe me. I've stood on some pulpits in America and I didn't want to stand on them again. Because everything offends them. Even when you ask a question that you know has to be asked. Why is that one looking that way? Oh no, you know what? It's not of our business. No, it is your business. It is your business. Are you going to walk in here naked and we're going to say no? God will change him. Brother, we will dress you up. <laughs> and cast out some devils out of you. Are you following what I'm saying? Not all of America, but I'm saying some parts of it. They, they, they're not hard. To, they can't speak certain things. They, they can't say that this is sin anymore. They can't. They can't. And that's where some of, I see some of our Ugandans are trying to go now. They are too sensitive that, that, that now in church we're not raising disciples, we're raising funds. You understand? Eh? Funds. We, we're raising funds in church. It has to be, no. Sometimes it will rebuke you 
and you'll swallow it and go back home and be fine. You have to be willing to take this hard one. And that is why when we come into the curve of success, many of our young people are not in that equation. They have even failed to leave their own families' homes. They can't do anything. And they are blaming everyone in the world. Because they are principles God has laid. You cannot bypass them. You cannot ignore them. They are available. If the, that, my first job gave me 100,000 shillings. Yet I was a good student in class. And I used to... <laughs> You're on a, on, a, on a truck, 3 a.m. in the morning, going to Sudan to clear things on a border. Bibia, Nimule, those hot things where you, you guys even, Sudan is hot. They just cook eggs on, this, on the sun sometimes. You, you just need to get a, the sun and... You understand what I'm saying? You're clearing goods for 100,000. You come back. You deliver all the money. 4 a.m. You're entering town. You're seated next to a person who has not bathed in a century. You're seated with goats and chickens under here. And somebody has ghee in the back. Apostle Grace, I, I, I want you to pray for the grace on your life over me. <laughs> I don't think you know what you're talking about. I want some young man walked to me and said, I want seven times your anointing. I told him you'll die. I walked away. I told him you'll die. So, yes, I just, some people think I came from university. After university, the spirit, wah, and then I started ministry. No! There's a reason when he's going to use Moses, you'll have to throw him into the animals. There's a reason when he's going to use David, he'll have to bring bears and lions to attack those sheep. You look at every man that God has used mightily. There is a process. There is a wilderness. There is a story. It's there. You just don't see it. But they have their scars. They have their scars. Are you following what I'm saying? They have their scars. We washed toilets for the gospel. I remember one time, these guys told that we went to preach somewhere and then they, we found a heap of, 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 of uh, bricks. And they said, if you want to preach to us, get those bricks from there to there. We got, they, they, they call it Suluru Moja, one line. Until our fingers started bleeding. Some people's fingers bled because we were throwing uh, bricks. After you wash your hands and start preaching the gospel, and they listen, and none receives Christ. <laughs> Somebody says, but you are not wise. No. The man I'm representing paid the heavier price. <laughs> I remember one time we went in a community, and from those old elderly people, eh, you enter a home, you clean four, five, so three, four build, uh, bedrooms. You have clothes. One time I washed clothes until my fingers started tearing off because I was trying to evangelize to an old woman. Who needed to know God? You don't know. Some of you, when you speak, you don't even know. You don't know. You think people just wake up. You don't know. You don't know. Especially when you're born in you are just there and they invited you. Then you enter this thing and then your head tells you, oh no, that's how things work. No. No. You have to get to a point where nothing in God for God can be frustrated if you're made up to do it. But you're doing all that yet you need fees. But the Lord is before you. You're profiting the kingdom. You're doing all of that and you're sick. My father is here. He can tell you. But I'm profiting the kingdom. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
That's the right way of waiting on God. Somebody shout amen. Shout glory to God. So he says yes. Things are going to come and they are hard. But continue in agreement with God. Don't set yourself against God. Because things are not yet working. Don't draw back and refuse to go in the presence of God because your marriage is not working. Come on. Come on. There are people, there will always be somebody who has paid a heavier price than you have. Than you have. That's why some of you don't move. The Baganda call it a chejo. I don't know what it says in English. Because I don't know the English translation for that. You think something is just going to come from heaven eh? and come flying on a magic carpet and fall in your house. Oh, keep praying. Even when God, even, I've seen, even when you, you, you start the miracle man, even when God is sending miracle money, he sends little. You study those who have had miracle money. When he made the miracle money in a fish, it was just to pay taxes. He was deliberate. Miracle money does not, does not build cathedrals. Patterns do. <laughs> Principles do. Show me anybody who has been rich by finding money in their bathtub. Enough to make them wealthy. It doesn't exist. It can only pay rent for that month. Two million what you, you picked a you hundred dollars. That's miracle money. The rest of it God will again have to subject you to the process of the laws that he has set for you to be a success. Now you either hear that or you wait for a super spiritual man of God who will prophesy your new life. And you think that by prophecy alone you'll make it. <laughs> I, I've met people who have like a hundred prophecies on their lives. But when you look at them, they're not different. Actually, men who have sat under teachers do better. You study. Take a study. Because somebody thinks eh, that you're going to bypass all your nasty attitude. And they'll just prophesy you into marriage. <laughs> men find wives, not women. And there is something that makes a wife. Do all you go around mountain and pray and fast. We're going to still meet at the issue. Can your temper handle marriage? And some of you know you can kill. You can kill. I know. You can, you can kill. I was dealing with somebody whom they almost killed recently. Not in this church, of course, but they almost killed them. Imagine. You understand what I'm saying? There is always a process to things. And this is one of the most integral. It's, some of you say, oh, you're seekers. What do you mean by you're a seeker of God? It means when it's convenient or it's not convenient, you must be a seeker. Things might not always agree and they might not always fit your comfort and convenience and your specifications. But when God desires something, he desires it. So you are going in this cycle of things repeating themselves. The lesson really from God is they're not yet ready. You're just repeating and going around. You can change church, change friends, change money, jobs, change everything, change even your color. But we're going to still land at this one thing. That there was a process you're missing. And you think that that cosmetic will fix it. It will not. It will not. It will not. That is why there is something about a man who God will reward after waiting on him. That which comes from God after waiting. Huh? It will guarantee an effortless journey. When it comes from God, you wait. There is a day it will come. And nobody can stop it. 
Nothing can frustrate it. You're not using your, your strengths. You're not applying your wisdom. You're not using human ideas and opinions. It's just God knitting things for you. And you can literally see it is God. No sugar added. Are you following what I'm saying? But this is a thing that I'm trying to tell people. I have set the Lord before me. I have agreed with him whether things are working or not. We are agreeable. Somebody shout amen. I have adjusted to God. Whether things are working for me or not, I am adjustable to him. Yes, I don't have this, but when he calls, I'm available for him. Oh, somebody talk about godly character. Are you following what I'm saying? He says, I have composed myself before God. Some of you go in the presence angry. You know how we go to God and say, Father, thank you for this day. For some people go to the presence of, why did you do that? And, and they even boast over it. I heard somebody speaking so immaturely and childish. You know me, I talk to God like I talk to uh, like my friend. Okay, we also talk to him like he's our friend, but also our God. I told God, you know, and some of you, the way you pray, how do you translate that? Some words are just not, they just don't come in English. Forgive me for the people who are watching across the world. I'm cognizant of some of you who are watching from across the world. But you see, how do you say it? How do you say kumanyira? Manilaring? How do you say kumanyira? Yeah, you, yeah, familiarity. Yes, you're too familiar. You breed contempt. Somebody says, you know me when I'm talking to God, I tell him, I'm not happy here. I don't like this. This thing is not working for me, God. I told him, no, why would you hurt me? And, <laughs> so these guys don't know God. <laughs> huh? Somebody is, is literally talking to God that way. Hmm? Me, you know, you got your spoiled character. Your parents didn't tell me, they didn't tame it when you were younger. And then you got that character from your parents or your wherever you were raised from, those bad manners. You know, there are people who, they're disrespectful to God, they're disrespectful to God's ministers, they're disrespectful to everybody. And when you correct them, they'll have to leave the church. Somebody one time sent me a message and told me, hey, how can I look for you? Imagine a church member. How can I look for you? I send you my messages and you don't answer them. Hey, hey, hey! Are you my mother? Hey, hey, hey. One night we get our name, Pisa. Are you my mother? Oh, my wife? Oh, my father? Those are the people who my father has the right to call me at 2 a.m. He has it. But somebody is quarreling with you because you didn't, eh? I look for you, eh? and then you don't answer my calls. I said, they left the church because I didn't answer their calls. I told them, go to another pastor, I'll handle that, not me. The way I was raised, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You'd see slaps coming from, you don't know where they're coming from. You just hear things beating you. You just see things falling. You don't know where they are falling from. But they are falling on you. Pa, 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 pa. By the time you realize they are beating you, they've already finished. Somebody shout amen. amen. How dare you talk to somebody that way? Who you don't feed, you don't clothe. You understand? But some of you, that's how you are. You get that same attitude, you put it on a man. You speak to your husband as if you're speaking to your equal. Hmm? And now let me ask my daughters. Now you're, I'm talking to you, my daughters. I'm talking to my spiritual daughters. If you're not among them and you're a visitor, it's not yours. If you, if you look at your mother, Sarah, speaking to Abraham, you think she didn't know his name? Answer me. 
You think she didn't know Abraham's name? What does the Bible say? Even as Sarah obeyed her husband, comma, calling him Lord. Mike. Not microphone. Michael. So, the problem is, you guys, no, 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 listen. I'm teaching Bible here. I'm not teaching African tradition. I'm teaching Bible here. You can disagree. Let me tell you, I thank God for my wife. She has never called me by my name. Not that I asked for it. Not that I have ever expressed offense in her not calling it. I have never warned my wife that don't call me this or call me this. But from the day I married my wife, I, they have never called my name in my house. My king, my lord, what? Who has God? Come on, elbow somebody. Obeyed calling him. It's a mark of submission. And don't call them animal names, bear. No. They're not food, sweetie pea. What? No. Sweetheart is gender neutral. And it's also okay. I'm talking to my daughters. Allow me. If even I title my wife, I, I don't call my wife darling. I call her Muchara. Do you understand what I'm saying? Muchara. 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 Abalala Bakazi. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Shout hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't import your spoiled family manners into the church. Don't. You, you leave your, the things you learned, the wrong things you learned, leave them there and lead another generation. Let your daughters grow up hearing you how you call your husband. And then tell me tomorrow whether they are going to meet their boyfriends or their husbands, I mean, and then call them Robert. Yeah, I told you Robert because he's your friend. So you mean we are not friends to our wives? No. We are friends to our wives. But the difference between ours and some of you is that when they see us, they see kings and castles. I don't know what they see in you, but I mean that's what they see. They see kingdoms and empires. Glory to God. <laughs> Am I helping somebody? It's going to be hard, but learn it. It's going to be hard, but learn it. Somebody asked me, what? how do you teach these girls? That's why you see every week. Some of you should thank me. Every week. Every week. It's these small things. These little small foxes that spoil the vine. So, back to what I was trying to tell you. So, somebody's talking to God like they're talking to their young brother or their brother, sibling rivalry. I told God, now I'm annoyed. Somebody was testifying once, not in this church. I told God, now I'm annoyed. I'm not going to preach. This is a, a person testifying. And then God brought sickness on me. And I said, no, I'm not going. <laughs> so I look at this woman. I'm thinking, what? Then he said, but I got so sick. We were in a, in a cell meeting. Until I said, you know what? Okay, 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 okay. Let me go. But then she gave her conditions. And the moral of the story is, about Uganda, if God wants you, he wants you. But look at how, how much you have to go through to discover that some of us, God says, Grace. Yes, sir. I want you to 
No, you run while you, you wait for the instruction. So that you redeem time. By the time the instruction arrives, you are the place earlier. Somebody shout amen. <laughs> he says, I behaved myself always before God. When things were working, I behaved. When things were not working, I behaved. When things were reconciling, I behaved. When things were not reconciling, I behaved. I watched my behavior every time it touched God. I profited God. When I was sick or not, I profited God. When my marriage was failing or not, I profited God. When my children were sick and on drugs, I profited God. When my job was at the end and they were going to fire me, I still profited God. God is looking for people like that. The heart is sick to serve him. You're broken and disappointed, but you're in there. You're saying, God, I'm here. Rain can come, shine will shine. I'm still here. I'll not lose who I am because things are not reconciled. Let me tell you, watch such people. When it comes, it does not just, take, it just, it just, it does not just come to meet their need and provide for their challenge. It also comes with a grace and glory to teach another or multiply itself. Who has understood it? Such people just don't get answers. They get answers that not only teach others or multiply themselves in others. You, there's a grace that will come upon your life and give you authority to help somebody in the same challenge by simply speaking. There's some that will come on your life. You will just need to tell somebody, don't worry. Your marriage will heal. And it will be as though a prophet spoke in the destiny of another woman's marriage. Why? Because you went through it with pattern. You won. You did your dues as a warrior. You're a fighter. You know how to carry through. What if it fails completely? You still turn up. You tell God, yeah? He has refused. But I'm here. This, this, this here, nothing. No, this one here, nothing. And those who know me know me. I can lose anything, but not this. This relationship with God, that one, no one can get in there. Nobody. This is this one. This one. Anything can leave me. You can live my life and I stay alone. I'll still be with God. Because he's the only person I know. He's the only one I can understand. He's the only one. You see, recently I, was, I met somebody who was dealing with unforgiveness. And then they asked me a question. I said, Apostle Grace, how do you forgive those who hate you? I'm finding it hard to forgive. And I told them, you have not known the love of God. Some of us who have been dearly loved by God. You want to enter the presence. And literally, you run to get into the presence. I remember the first time it happened to me, I started to have experiences of this intimacy. And I remember one time we were in a bus. And there was a service. And the bus stopped. There was a little hindrance. I ran out of that bus and ran. And, and what? I just wanted to be with God. That's, that's, that's just what I wanted. When you have been loved so much. I'm talking about the love of God that passes mere knowledge. The Amplified speaks of that which passes mere knowledge without experience. I'm talking about you experiencing. Let's read it. Ephesians 3.19. That you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. 
Because when you do that, you're filled through all your being and to all the fullness of God. When that thing fills you, even that man you hate, you will want to bless the next day. So nobody can teach you out of unforgiveness. Or they cannot be effectual until they give you the experience. Or lead you to the experience of feeling and understanding how much God loves us. Even the worst man, you will forgive. Even the worst man, you will forgive. You look at your spouse and forgive them. Because you're not going to look at them based on what they've done to you or your perfection. No, you will look at them with the very eyes that God looks at you. Because he knows all your mistakes. He knows all your madness. He knows everything. No man in this room cannot tell me that you have not done something that could have disqualified you or even killed you. But look at you. You're here. And in being here, by your judgment, others shouldn't because they've done worse than you have. Nah, nah. We're all in the same boat. You've just not yet experienced God. You've, you've not built a relationship that understands God so uniquely and intimately that nothing nothing it doesn't matter by what it comes now i understand when paul says nothing can separate us from the love of god which is revealed in christ jesus he says not death not life no height no depth no creature no distress he says no frustration, nothing. He got to that place where he was persuaded that nothing could separate him from the love of God which is revealed in Christ. Is it trouble, he says? Is it tumults? Is it trials? What? What? Read it. Read, read, read uh, the message version. Let's read it. Message. One, two, three, let's go. High or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way Jesus, our master, has embraced us. Next line. Uh -huh. At the same time, you need to know that I carry with me at all times a huge sorrow. This is a man in pain. He's not living an easy life. He went through what you're going through. He also, his sorrow might not be like yours, but he also had these issues. And they were equally as hard as yours, or probably even harder. But he's telling you nothing. Amplified. Let's go back. Amplified, 38. Uh huh. Who shall, for I'm persuaded, he says, beyond doubt, I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things impending, and threatening, no things to come, no powers, uh -huh, no height, no depth, no anything else. He's telling you nothing, 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 nothing can set me against God. Nothing can affect my behavior against God. Even if you get sick and you say, I failed to get healed, I'm dying you'd still worship him until the day your spirit, your soul leaves your body. That's who we are. Tell your neighbor, that's who we are. We are warriors. Nothing. 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 You must tell yourself nothing. Nothing can take me out of serving God. Nothing. No circumstance. Recently, I saw a Nigerian pastor. He lost his son. Huh? Pastor Deboye. The boy whom he has. Eh? And the man the next day is preaching. Huh? He's preaching. 
He's telling him, God is good. And I'm like, this guy understands. This guy understands. He understands. This man understands. Who called him? You know, that's when, that's when you know whether you know God or not. That's when, that's when you know whether you know God or don't. But some of you, by what you do, you don't yet know him. He says, delight yourself in him. He didn't, he's, he's not talking about the circumstance under which you would, you would or you may. But he still says, delight yourself in me. So in Proverbs, he has told you, I have set the Lord before me always. Full colon, because he's at my right hand. The right hand there means direction. Because he leads me. That's what he's saying. Because he leads me. Yes, I have my challenges, but I still hear that voice. It's still there. His law governs my spirit. Things might not be as working as I want them to be, but I still listen to things and I feel like he's still talking to me. Do you understand that kind of situation? Where you're broke, but you still hear him. You have not yet had things change, but you still feel the voice of direction in your life. You feel like you're not lost at sea. There is something happening. Yes, the, the things have delayed, but when you close your eyes, you feel him. He's there because he is your direction. Then he says, I shall not be moved. That is the pattern. The clearest I can give you by language. To help you stand when things are delayed. Keep your course. If it doesn't work for you now, one day you look for it yourself and switch it on. But keep your course. Because I always tell you, in the world there will always be somebody who has endured more than you have. There are people dealing with more challenges than you have. There are people dealing with more troubles than you carry, but they've not denounced God, neither behaved themselves unseemly, nor judged him foolishly. Stand. Stand. I don't know who God sent me for. I don't know who God sent me for. Stand. Stand. Never draw back to perdition. There are many brothers and sisters in the world going through the same trials. And many are standing. Stand. Let's get to our feet. Stand. I don't know who I'm talking to. Stand. 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 I know the disease is still there, but stand. I know the man has not yet adjusted, but stand. I know your daughter is not listening yet, but stand. I know people have rejected you, but stand. Get to a point where nothing, nothing can take you out of the presence of God. Because let me tell you, saints, the day Satan discovers what can take you out, it's going to be your test until the day you die. Can I say it again? The day Satan discovers what takes you out, it's going to be your test until the day you die. Until the day you die. There's nothing you could lose should make you lose God. Nothing. Keep this. Keep this. That's the most important thing. Come on, let me give you just a few minutes to talk to God. 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 Lord, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see. 
hear things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. And God, I look to you. I want me all the way. Sing it. Give me peace to see things like you do. God, I look to you. Nowhere my help control. Nowhere else. Just what to do, yeah. You know just what to do. You know just what to do. Ooh. And I'm loving you. I'll love you. Father, we thank you for your word today. Somebody has been strengthened. Somebody has been healed. Somebody has been transformed. Somebody's life has been changed. Somebody has built healthy skin. Spiritual I mean. Thick skin. Spiritual I mean. And regardless of what happens, they are going to be stronger. They will behave. They will adjust. They will agree. Always with you. Father, we make our pledge that regardless of what happens in life, you abide God you abide God and we will profit you in season or out of season we'll agree with you in or out of season we will stand in or out of season because that's what you're looking for in Jesus name Amen listen Listen.
by reason of what God has placed on my life, I came with a very heavy burden for somebody this morning. It has been so heavy. Even now I feel it. And I want to tell that person, whoever is listening, because I know who I'm talking to, greater days are yet to come. And that saith the Lord. That when finally he comes through, God will erase every trace of your past pain. That it will feel as though it never happened before. God has a way of redeeming time. God has a way of healing days. God has a way of mending hearts. Does not the Bible say that he heals the brokenhearted? He will heal you. And you look as though you are never damaged. But stand. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Come on, clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. And I'm talking about incurable diseases healing. I'm talking about irreconcilable differences. Reconciling. Thank you, Lord. If you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity to come and receive him as your Lord and Savior. Wherever you are, come right now and I pray with you. All your as we have seen, you're the great Jehovah, my friend. There's somebody today, I'm not going to plead with you. You know you're supposed to come. Today is the day, come. is the best decision you can make 
this is the best decision you can make. There is somebody who is supposed to get born again today. You have a swelling in your left breast. Are they here or they are still in the back? Is anybody here with a pain in your left breast? You've been having pain? There's a woman here. Are you the one? There's a woman here. You're the one? How long has it been? Three months. God is going to heal you. He's going to heal you. He's going to heal you mightily today. You know, I saw it. It was more serious than you see. It was, it was a very, very serious thing. It was going to become a very serious problem. God is going to change it today. 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 Hallelujah. Today. We're going to pray for you. You're going to repeat these words after me. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Mchala Ram, Come and lead these, people, these kids to salvation. I want somebody who speaks Lugan. We have those street children we attend to every week. Move our. Chisenye, wachikoni. Katwe. Move our katwe. Those ones. We feed them every Sunday. Praise the Lord. I'm going to pray for you. There's also this lady in a pink top. You. Yes, you. Who is looking behind? Come on to pray for you. I see God wants to deliver you from sinuses. You understand what I'm saying? How long have you had? a family disease. Do you have any relative here? You are the one representing the family. Imagine sinuses, family disease. You're going to be the first one to heal. And then when you heal, you're going to heal others. You're going to heal others. It's amazing that I see a job for you in the U.S. soon. You're going to leave this country. I see it. I see it. I see it. You're going to leave. Had you planned to leave? You wanted to. When? You applied for a visa, but you didn't go through. This time it's going to go through. Going to go through. She's not, you see, there are people who are not, who by destiny and design are not supposed to be in certain places. Now she says she has tried to go to America, applied for a visa, and failed to. But for me, in my vision of the spirit, I saw her working there. You know? So She was supposed to have gone, but she also don't know what happened. You know? But also God is not only going to heal her of sinuses, but she's going to pray for the rest too. That's how God loves us. <laughs> That's how God loves us. Father, in the name of Jesus, I refuse, I rebuke and bind and destroy that spirit of sinuses. I command it to leave not only you, but your household. I see the anointing of God going through you right now, healing you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Power of the Holy Ghost. And I thank you, God, because hard door to travel is open. In Jesus' name. It's done. It's done. Those of you who are here,
Repeat these words after me. Say, Father, I thank you for Jesus because he died for my sins and was raised for my glory. Today, my heart receives Jesus. Dear Jesus, I take you today as my personal Lord and Savior. Change me. Transform me. Change my world. Redeem all that I've lost in Jesus. In your name I've prayed. Amen. Now put up your hands. Right now, God is delivering you from any form of struggle. By the way, long-term illnesses are healing now. I feel it. Oh, you know, when I spoke it, there's somebody on my left. You got a sharp pain through the left and it went through like, who is that? Like you felt a sharp pain going through here. Somebody around on my left hand side. You felt a sharp pain going through your, your left side of the stomach. Where is that person? Where is that person? You felt a sharp pain going through. Oh, she's here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is delivering you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke and burn and destroy every spirit of infirmity and disease. I decree healing right now from the crown of your heads to the soles of your feet. May God deliver you. May he transform you. May he change you. Witchcraft, I rebuke you from the root in the name of Jesus. Spirits of struggle and strife, lose. You spirit of destruction, I command you to lose that young woman. Get out! Get out. Get out. Get out, you spirit of destruction. Leave her chest. I command you to leave her right now. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a minute of praise. You know, there's also something some of you should learn. Eh? Sometimes when you rebuke a particular spirit, if somebody else has it, they all hear. <laughs> so that's why sometimes you can see me point at one and then another one also. Because when you rebuke, they all hear. If, for example, you're dealing with a blind spirit or spirit of infirmity and you rebuke it on one person, but there are other people with the same spirit, the, they are same, the same spirit, those spirits can't identify that you are rebuking one because they all know that they are the spirits. So sometimes you might hear me pray for someone here and then you hear somebody scream from another place. Eh? It's the same work. It's God doing his work. Somebody shout amen. So those of you who have received Christ, is it there they come? Huh? Give us a few minutes just to take your numbers. Just to follow you up. You have learned the habit of leaving me receipts. Come and I pray for you. Sinuses? Eh? How long? You don't know, but you just feel them. Yeah. Father, I thank you. Because you're healing this young man right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Bring that man. I'm coming to pray for him. You can stay there. I'm coming. Where is Okello? You're the one. This one. Father, we refuse epilepsy. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. What's up? Huh? Oh. Father, we rebuke and bind and destroy every spirit of infirmity and disease. We command you to lose and leave this child. We speak healing over your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. See you on. Carry somebody. Carry. This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at .org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Finero, make manners.